personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Estimated stock ROI rate of return assuming constant dividends and growth. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. We're in the icon left-hand side, Practice Problems tab in the 12240 Estimated Stock ROI Assuming Constant Dividends and Growth tab. Also, take a look at the Immersive Reader tool, Practice Problems, typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. We're thinking about investments in stocks, stocks representing ownership interest in a corporation, corporations being separate legal entities breaking out their ownership into fixed or standardized units of shares or stocks. We are also typically thinking about publicly traded companies, those trading on public exchanges, making them more transparent and accessible to individuals. And so we can see things such as their financial statements, for example, to make investment decisions upon. Also note that your investment strategies may differ when using tools such as mutual funds and ETFs, as opposed to say investing in individual stocks. We're considering individual stocks here. When you're thinking about them, you're often drilling down on the trend analysis and the financial statements of the individual company, as opposed to possibly sectors or sections of a market, for example. So the assumption here, we've got the dividends at year end are $7. The stock price is gonna be $80. Now the stock price will be determined by supply and demand because other stocks are trading for that amount. That's how we can determine what the current price is. We're gonna be assuming the constant growth rate of 5%. And we're also gonna assume that the dividends are going out into the future uh, at a constant rate. So we're using a method similar to what we use when we basically value the bonds, for example. So remember when you're kind of valuing the bonds, figure out the price of the bonds, you're typically looking at the cash flows that are happening into the future, discounting them back to the current time frame. the cash flows representing a standardized fixed income flow of interest in the future and annuity in essence, and then the payment at maturity. When we're talking about stocks, it's a little bit more complex because we've got two things that we're kind of looking at. One, we might get dividends, cash payments, cash flow, the company taking the earnings of their company and distribute them, them to the owners in the form of dividends. And we also might get an increase in the value of the stocks, possibly by the company taking those earnings, putting them back into the company and buying machinery and equipment, increasing the value of the company, hopefully being reflected in the stock price. We also do not have any maturity date in order to kind of figure out the future cash flow because this, the uh, investments could go out into indefinite, right? So we're kind of considering dividends, for example, in this assumption and a cash flow assumption as if they're gonna basically go out indefinitely into the future. We could make other assumptions. We could assume they're gonna go up periodically or something like that, but we're gonna assume that in this particular company, the dividends are going out into the future and that we have constant growth meaning the value of the stock is going to be going up in the future. And we know the stock price, therefore we want to consider what the rate of return is. Okay, so we can use the ROI uh, just if there was just dividends, for example, would be the $7 of dividends and the stock price. Meaning if we just have the dividends as our return and we're not basically considering the fact that the stock's going to go up in value, we're just looking at what we're receiving in terms of dividends, we would be comparing the dividends, usually on a yearly basis, to then the stock price, what's being traded uh, at that at that current time frame. And if we divide those two out, pulling out the trustee calculator, we've got the seven divided by the 80, which is gonna be moving the decimal two places over 8.75. So that's the ROI if it were just dividends. And then we're just gonna tack on that constant growth rate. Now that constant growth rate, the strategy is is more and more effective when we're thinking about uh, stocks that are kind of peaking out in their business cycle. So it's like utility companies, for example, that don't need to basically invest much anymore and they're just tracking along and they're just gonna be making money and giving out dividends, right? Or things that are closer to a standard growth rate. Those are easier to use this cash flow kind of model with because when you think about the constant growth rate of 5%, for example, you'd like that to be 
that's that's a pretty big assumption, right? If the growth rate was a, a lot higher than that, that would be a big assumption uh, to basically make. So we're gonna say, so you gotta be kind of knowing which kind of companies you're gonna apply this model uh, to when you're trying to look at the valuation through future cash flows. So if we assume that there's a 5% constant growth rate, meaning the value of the stock's gonna go up by 5%, and that means our stock price you know, goes up by 5%, and we can sell it and realize it if we wanted to, that would mean then that we'd have the return of a uh, rate of return of 13%, the 8.75 plus the 5%. Now to kind of get an idea of what we're doing here, remember we're taking, if I took an annuity calculation and I calculated an annuity based on this present value calculation in a similar way to get back to the stock price, we've done this in prior presentations. So this would be similar to kind of like a bond calculation if, if I had my rate of return uh, here was the 13.75, uh, but I assume a constant growth rate of 5%, that means the rate of return for like just the dividends would be the 8.75. If I, if I tried to present value that stream of dividends at the 8.75, for example, we do a present value of the rate that would be the 8.75. The number of periods, I'm using a very large number, a thousand, because we don't know, there is no maturity, it could go on forever. So you could try to try to get a better idea or a feel for what's going on by making this number not so high out into the future and see if it has an impact on your, on your price calculation. If you take it out like a thousand years into the future, because it could indefinitely go out in forever, then you know the, you get closer to basically this number, uh, this number here, the 80, so comma, and then the payment, is going to be the seven and that's going to give us our eighty dollars just to see that if you took the present the annuity roi with the dividend and growth rate so now i use the same calculation using this 13.75 based on just the dividends so i took the rate which is going to be this 13.75 the number of periods is 100 this time i'm just picking up fairly large number comma and then the payment is going to be the seven again you'd get to that 50 91. And we're gonna to try to use that number here as we kind of think about it uh, in terms of mapping out all the payments into the future. So we could do a similar calculation, try to map everything out into the future. You can actually do this a little bit more complex method if you're thinking the dividends are gonna go up, not at a standard rate, for example. So then you can actually map out on the years into the future, what's gonna happen and do a, do a kind of a more complex model. So we'd have the dividends uh, are seven all the way across. So if we went out 100 years, $7 dividends, that would total up to $700, uh, but that's expanded over a long time frame. If I was to discount each one of these dividends on a year by year basis, this is doing it year by year is what allows me to increase the dividends. If I wanted to use a model and assume that the dividends are gonna go up, say every five years or something like that. Uh, but then we're gonna, we're gonna say, if I took that $7 and discounted it back, using the rate of just this 8.75%, that would give us to the to the 6.43. Uh, and if I did that all the way across, of course, it would get smaller and smaller as we discount, for example, $7 back using the 8.75% for four years, it's now at five. And if I go all the way out to 100 years, I'm still getting that $7 because we're assuming that that is constant but it's very small. It's a very small number once we go way out into the future. And that's why it's kind of indefinite, but they're becoming a lot less significant out there. And we get to something close to the $80, not quite 80. That's why we used a thousand up here. So you can see the impact uh, on, on how far out you go when you actually map it out this way, which I think is kind of useful. If we did the same thing, but now we use the $7 dividend and we use the 13.75 rate of return, $7 discounted back at the 13.75 would give us the 6.15. And if I did that all the way across, then we can add all those up and we get to that 50.91, which is this 50.91 we got to here. And that's gonna be used because we could try to think about, okay, what's gonna be happening with this constant growth kind of idea. If I use that, if I use that 50.91 as our starting point, and I assume that we're going to increase by 5% constant growth. What does that mean from a cash flow? Now, note this isn't actually cash flow now, 
because we're not getting the dividends. We're saying that the value of the stock is going to increase by 5% each year, which means I could then have the option of selling it, but I may not, you know, if I, if I sell it, then I'm, the constant growth stops at that point in time, right? So it's, it's the potential for us to have its unrealized gains until we sell the stock. But if it went, if it went up six for 5%, then I'd have 50.91 times the point Oh, five, that would be an increase of 2.54 plus the 50.91, which would be 53.45. Or we can think about it this way. If I take one or 100% plus 0.05, that would be the 1.05 or 105% times the 50.91. That would get us to 53. So the stock price is going to go up to 53.45 times the 1.05. It's going to go up to 56.13 times the 1.05 and you can see the trend here that's what we're assuming is going to happen but notice what happens to our our return then that we're getting it's not an even return like the dividends were the return is actually going up so if this rate is fairly high it's going to have a a, a kind of confusing impact on our calculation because it's not going to be the same all the way across meaning if i for example if i compare that to the dividends which are right here I'm just pulling down the dividends that we did up top, $7 even that we're assuming all the way across 100 years out. The, the increase in the stock price starts to get significant, right? So now you're looking at the difference here. If you had a stock price, if my investment was at the 6375.8 times the point, uh, 0.05, we've got the 3... 18 that's a significant increase in dollar amount but it's a still a hundred years out into the future so it's still a fairly fairly small once we kind of present value it back to the current time frame so that's the two values that we're going to get if we add them together then we've got we've got the 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 uh the, the just these two the 2.55 and the 7 not the 53 so we've got the 2.67 and the the 7 that's going to be the uh, the amount of value we're getting into the future in terms of dividends and the increase in the stock price. And then if we discount that all the way across using the 13.75 now, so now we're going to take period one, we're discounting this 955 that we're assuming we're going to get back one year using the 13.75. A formula like this would be the rate would be the 13.75 we'd say then the number of periods is going to be this one and then comma comma because it's not an annuity future value would then be that 9.55 bringing it back to the current time frame getting us to the 8.39 about and then of course it goes down and down as we go into the future and as we go into the future all the way out it still gets relatively small not as small as the dividends which are almost non-existent the growth in them because again this this percent in increase still has an impact out into the future so it's kind of it kind of could if that rate of growth is high then this calculation gets a little bit distorted right so in any case so if i add all that up that's where we're getting about that 80 dollars. so we're kind of recalculating the 80 dollars. and the reason i do these kind of present value things is to try to this concept up here is a little bit abstract people probably just kind of memorize this but don't have any real understanding of what's going on and you can't get to more complex calculations uh, by breaking out more complex assumptions unless unless you break it out on a year by year basis it's also just really good for your time value of money calculations so it's really good practice to do these in excel highly recommend it